and I'm assuming that we could probably have um, um, the the billing or EHR folks um, pull a list of everyone who has their criteria as Ryan White eligible and compare that to your list of careware patients, uh, that active careware patients that you have and cross check that. And is your, your um, medical record or patient numbers the same in careware as they are in NextGen? Yes, they are. They are, okay, got it. So that could be a, an easy link that can happen um, in that process to do that. Okay. Uh, patient record, medical record, okay. Okay. Um, awesome. Woo. I think one other thing, if we haven't already talked about this, my brain can't remember at this point, but I know. <laughs> the eligibility assessments, I don't know. I just feel like, our, would we be doing it at a monthly basis? Say we get careware all cleaned up. Would we be giving this to billing ideally at a monthly basis? Because sometimes the eligibility for Ryan White patients is so fluid. So like they may be eligible and waiting on or they might not be eligible because we're waiting on a document or, and then they become eligible. So I guess Maria could just update that in real time, but say that happened in between, you know, the month, I just feel like we'll still be missing a few and maybe that's okay because it's kind of fluid in between the six month and the 12 month sometimes for patients, not all patients. I think um, right. for the most part, if they're eligible and we screen them at the six month, um, or at least we hit the, the year, the year, then it, then it's pretty consistent, but there are folks that fluctuate a bit or they may have, they may have been eligible upon initial, um, enrollment date, but then they got a job. So then right. Maria would have to go back and, and um, update that, but she wouldn't know that until six months into it. So if that happened, you know, say month two, technically, if we're still billing um, charges to the Ryan White program, they could be ineligible at month two, but Maria may not catch it till month six. Right, right. And that is where you're going to need your policy and procedure. Okay. Um to outline how you're going to catch this. Like, HRSA, HRSA is not going to come to you and say, you're one day over eligibility, you know, you this patient can't be counted, right? They're, they want you to be as precise as possible. But we understand that this is a fluid kind of process. That's why we're asking for a six month revisit that we formalize that discussion that Maria is having with the patient. That patient could go back and, you know, to month two, from month six to month two and say, I'm no longer eligible. When that happens, Maria, do you do you document in Careware that it, like six months ago, September, I was no longer eligible? Yeah, I would. I will, would go, uh, I will go into Careware and update it. And you would go back to like, I said I got my job on, on September 15th. You would go back and say September 15th, 2021, Michael's not eligible anymore because of insurance. But because he has, he has, uh, he makes too much money. Um, no, I, I usually say, for example, um, if the patient comes in and didn't bring proof of income or whatnot, 
and they they're telling me they make it's under the FPL, right? They're they're meeting criteria, and when they tell when they actually bring me the their um, pay stubs and they're like, oh, they're making over the income. Then when they provide me those documentation, that's when I would document they're not Ryan Y eligible. But I usually have them, they have to provide, usually on my form, I give them two weeks to yes. give me anything. So within those two weeks, they have to provide any any pre, um, POI. Um, and I would definitely update that as soon as I get that information. Got it. So you're giving them a grace period. I am, yes. Of they have two weeks mm -hmm. to provide you that documentation, or they're no longer Ryan White eligible. Yes. Got it. Is yeah, that's that for for oh. new intakes only. But if they're already intaked and approved, and they don't report any changes, we won't get those changes till six months. That's for the intakes for the new one and for annual. I give them grace period two weeks. Two, two weeks, right? Which is yeah. which is great, but but you might not see the person for six months, mm -hmm. right? Like you might have those patients that are, you know, seven months out. Yes. Like I rescheduled my six month appointment because you know I'm going on vacation, and um, so I come in on the seventh month. And you do my work, you do my, I bring my paperwork in that would, you, you would, and I was eligible. I would just continue on in the process or I would, you would document that I'm no longer eligible at that point. Yes. Got it. Okay. That makes, that makes complete sense. Where's that documented? I, I don't, did do you have it Kendra? On it's not documented formally as a procedure, but we have those forms. So I, I uploaded our yep. six month eligibility form and our 12 month eligibility form. And it has a little line at the bottom that says you have two weeks to bring. Yep. And then the patient signs and Maria signs, but the actual process is not documented. I think Maria sent me an email some time ago that we could probably start getting all this documented, but it's not documented. Um, let me clarify. I don't believe at least our formal process as we're, as it stands now, since I've been here is not on there. It's not documented um, in a, in a procedure per se. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's something that, if we can put down those steps, and I think that would be really helpful uh, for us. And what we can do is we can take the steps that we talked about today, um, and we can put those down, like this is what you, you kind of do, but I want to make sure that we get the systems right, because we talked a lot about I do this in CareWare and then I do this in NextGen and I do this here and I do this here. I want to make sure that we get it right uh, for you. But it sounds to me like you're doing the process really great and you're doing some really awesome documentation. We just need a procedure so that when HRSA comes out and they say, okay, how are you doing this eligibility? Oh, this person's one day over. Yeah, they're one day over, but they had a two week grace period to give me the documents um, because they forgot them when they came in. Oh, okay. It's in my policy and procedure, right? That's what they're going to go back to. They're going to go back to that policy and procedure. And just like an auditor, they're going to say, is this done? Is this followed? Like, is, is the, Timesheet signed. Is the expense report signed? That's that's what they're going to look for during the an audit. Wow! Look at this. I love this. So this is not. I don't know if this is happening currently. This is what was uh, generated in 2017. So again, maybe a process in the diagram, but not necessarily um, 
step by step. So I think it's 